Hi guys, welcome back to Leafy Thiefy. Sorry it's taken me quite some time to make a new video for you guys. Um, but I thought today I'd do a video on uh, pots. Um, I know different people use different pots uh, and they all have their preference. But I just wanted to show you guys um, what kind of pots I use and how I like them and how I water them. Um, as you can see on the floor, mainly there's a couple type of uh, pots that I like to use for my plants. Uh, one of which is the uh, glass jars. I recycle them. I'm very big on recycling, so uh, hopefully after you guys watch this video, some of you will start to recycle as well. Um, the second type that I use is actually a plastic pot that I get from Amazon. Um, I'll go ahead and link them below they're pretty common um, and i really like how they look and the way that they retain water is kind of ideal for some of my plants and the last thing that i use is the terracotta pot um, this is very common you can find them anywhere like any sort of uh, nurseries or you sometimes you can even find them at like thrift stores um, and they're not very expensive and they're actually very good for uh, most of your plants um, so yeah Let's get started. So the first pot I want to talk about with you guys is the terracotta pot. Um, the terracotta pot is very porous, uh, meaning that uh, water will actually come out, uh, get soaked up by the terracotta and start to evaporate on the surface of the pot. Um, so it's a very well-drained pot, um, which is really good for uh, a, a lot of different varieties of plants that need the soil to be a little on the drier side. Um, for example, um, like any type of succulents, um, it's really good to have in a terracotta pot with the well-draining soil. So that way when you water, you know that water is not sitting in the pot and it gets drained. And even if your soil may be a little more on the dense side and less on the airy side, you know that water is coming out of the surface and uh, evaporates. So just as long as you don't over water, um, most of your plants that do prefer the drier climate, uh, works really well in terracotta pot. Um, so a couple of plants that I do grow um, in terracotta pot, one is the Ripsalis. They don't need a lot of substrate, um, so it works really well um, when they're growing in this pot. They prefer it to be a little more on the drier side. Um, and another thing I grow is the philodendron. Um, so you don't have to have the soil super well draining. You can have a, a soil that retains a little more moisture and then just uh, you utilize kind of the uh, characteristics of the ter ter terracotta pot um, and it's perfectly fine. Um, so it's actually a pot that you can use on many of your plants. Um, and usually what I don't do is I don't buy saucers for terracotta pots. I just kind of recycle plastic. Um, as you can see here, this is a recycling piece of plastic from kind of a plastic cup, um, maybe like a boba cup or something like that. Um, or like this plant right here, um, you, if you, you know, buy any sort of like marinara and sauce jars, you can actually just take the lid and it fits really well on some of these smaller terracotta pots. Um, and on larger terracotta pots like these, um, what I'll do is recycle the lid of uh, to-go soup containers um, because they are plastic so they'll hold the water and then you just pour it out. Um, they, you know, the, sometimes they'll get worn out by the sun or something like that and you can just easily replace them. That way you're not really wasting so much plastic. I'm really you know, big on recycling and I want to be able to recycle whatever I can. So if you guys uh, want to start using that method, it saves you money on trays uh, and you know, also benefits the environment. Um, usually for watering for terracotta pots, you want to water all the way through. Um, so I just use the simple method of top watering. And you want to make sure that the water does drain out the bottom. Um, so we'll go ahead and wait a little bit. Um, and don't let the water sit in the saucer. Always pour out the excess water. Um, and I always like to know that it drained out so that I know that the plant is completely water when it comes to uh, the terracotta pots. So as you can see right here, the waters are 
starting to leak out and you'll just drain that part um, and never let your plant sit in this water. Um, one of the reasons why is this water is kind of like not trash water but you know it all the nutrients are being drained out and all the bad things are being drained out of the soil and it's coming down this water and also it's shallow um it's gonna breed mosquitoes so make sure you do clean out and pour out that water and that's it pretty simple okay so the second type of pot i wanted to talk to you guys about is this uh, plastic pot um you can find this pot on amazon so i'm gonna go ahead and link the the amazon link down below so i've seen quite a bit of people purchase this kind of pots you'll see it on instagram and some youtubers um, will actually have uh, this pot and so i'm sure you guys are probably very familiar with it um the pot comes in different sizes uh, it does have this like nice beigey white color and also comes in kind of a gray uh, dark gray black color um, it comes with the sauce tray um, I really just like this pot for the aesthetic um, it's very minimalist um, and I think it's a really well designed plastic pot so if you have a plant that prefers a little bit more moisture like for example this uh, syngonium right here um, the pot itself will hold moisture so that it doesn't drain quite as fast so you can have a well draining soil but you don't have to worry about the soil drying out too fast so the water will drain pretty quickly um, but the pot itself will help retain the moisture um, i have this philodendron here um, so yeah uh, this is pretty basic um, and pretty easy to find so most of you should be able to get this anywhere in the world because amazon's just they're just too advanced these days. The last and final pot that I wanted to talk to you guys about is actually a recycled glass jar. Um, so this has no drainage whatsoever. You're not gonna, whatever water you feed into it are gonna get eaten up by the soil. So it's very, you have to be very careful not to overwater. Um, however, uh, the good thing is you can actually build a terrarium um so if you guys ever have like larger glass jars i don't know how other people um get these ones but i like to recycle them and build a terrarium and for these smaller glass jars um like regular tomato sauce or like whatever kind of pasta sauce jars uh you just have to build kind of a drainage layer at the bottom um, and separate that from your actual substrate and just make sure you don't overwater. So actually um, what I'll do is pre-mix the soil uh, with some water so that way the soil itself when I'm feeding and planting something in here is already moist. And then from that point on, um, what I'll prefer to water is actually with the spray bottle because the jar will hold a lot of moisture. Um, and you're probably not going to have to water this for like two to three months. It's that good. Um, and most of the time, it's the top part that will actually dry out. So what you'll actually do is just spray the top and re-wet the surface. And then that extra liquid will just start to trickle down. Um, if it does happen, you know, you don't water it for like six months or so, the soil start to dry, you can actually water it and just, you know, you'll see, you want to not overwater it. So you want to slowly water until you see some of the water start to leak to the bottom. And that's when you stop. You don't want to have too much water sitting in the bottom because it also does invite root rot. And generally what I'll do with these glass jars is I will mix in some uh, activated charcoal in there to help uh, clean the water because you really just don't know what can be retained in these however it is a way if you are somebody who knows plants and have been growing for a while it's something you can manage you can actually grow in a container that has no drainage um, and I have quite a several different species of plants growing in this this is an anthurium as you can see, the soil mix has a lot of pumice and a lot of uh, drainage in there. Um, so you don't want to grow something that with very compact soil in a glass jar. You want to grow something that kind of needs a lot of airy soil. This is a peperomia that's growing. 
Um, and even if the glass jar is super, super small, you actually can still manage to grow a plant in it, like this vining plant, as you can see. Um, this is a Dyskidia, or I call it a Dyskidia. Um, and you can still grow in a glass jar with no problem, even though this is just like the tiniest bottle ever. Um, you just have to be very wary about how you water. Um, the benefit of a glass jar is you can actually sometimes see the root system and how your roots are doing. Um, this one you can't really see. There's kind of a small piece right here. I don't know if you guys can see that on the camera. So I know that this plant is actually doing really well judging from the color and how that root is growing. Um, the downside of the glass jar is you can never expose it to direct sun because that's how you will get mold. Um, so most of these will stay in bright light and in shade and you don't want to let the sunlight hit it so you don't want to grow something that requires full sun in a glass jar um, unless you keep the soil completely dry so maybe i'll show you guys uh, in one of the videos how i put one of these together uh, but yeah you definitely can recycle glass jars and uh, use a planter with no drainage and just to show you guys, there's really no limit to what sort of pots you can grow plants in. Um, you can definitely go to a thrift store or kind of like a Dollar Tree to get plot, pots like these and grow your plants. Um, you can grow them in ceramic pots. I personally don't favor the ceramic pot. Um, some people use them kind of just as a cash pot and they just put the plastic pot in them. Um, but I don't like to do that. I like the plant actually growing in the pot itself. Um, so I don't have a lot of those. Um, you can grow, you know, in a tin tea can. There's no problem with that. I even have this one that's literally just a boba cup that I got some drainage hole on the bottom and I have this orchid growing out of it. Um, and you know, you can always get yourself a nice cup, just drill the bottom, get a drainage hole and you have a pot. So there's lots of things that you can recycle. You don't have to go with the traditional uh, pots that you see. As you can see, I dropped some soil right there. I gotta clean up. Um, but thank you guys again for watching my video. I really hope you like um, this video. So if you did, please like and subscribe. Spread it to your friends. Tell them that you are the best planter in the world. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!